Hello and welcome to Advanced Projections June 2020 report. This month's report format will begin in the form of a running comparison to what we said last month. Some contextual material has been deleted, but all forecasts are here for a month-to-month -month comparison. On the topic of the pandemic, in May, as of our writing on 5-8-2020, the number of COVID cases in the USA had gone from less than 210,000 cases to over 1.2 million in a matter of five weeks, a six-fold increase in a little over one month keeping the USA in the very dubious position of continuing to be the number one global hotspot for identified cases. Global cases at the time of April's report were about 1 million, and in May they were rapidly approaching 3.9 million, with a certainty to have gone through 4 million by the time many of you read that report. It is our considered opinion that global cases will reach several millions more, that U.S. cases will reach 2 million or even higher, up to 3 million perhaps, all with a commensurate fatality rate significantly higher than our previous view of 2 to 2.5%, now being much closer to 6%. While the worst hotspot in New York City appears to be calming down somewhat, fresh exponential increases are showing up in America's heartland right at the time where many states are trying to get people back out from under mandated stay-at-home directives. This is a sure recipe for a rebound wave of infections and rapidly increasing case and fatality rates. Now, as of June 5th, global COVID cases are now at 6.6 .6 million, and the fatality rate is holding constant at just about 6%. Third world countries are now at the forefront of the increasing number of cases, and their outbreaks will be much harder to manage due to poor health care systems and, in many cases, oblivious and, dare we say, irresponsible behaviors by country leaders. Early July will probably show 10 million plus global cases and a half a million fatalities. This is sad and also does not bode well for hopes to avoid a second wave this summer in the countries that have already had their first experiences. We expect continuing rapid increases in Brazil, India, and Russia. The U.S. will pass 1.9 million cases identified by Monday, June 8th, still by far the highest in the world, and with 110,000 fatalities, a bit under 6%. This is still about 60% more than one month ago. The growth rate here will stubbornly refuse to contract further as infections penetrate heartland and southeastern states. Crowds forming in large cities due to protest activities will also significantly add to the risk of a second wave of infections. Expect U.S. cases to push close to or even through 2.5 million by early July. Our economic overview. The definition of a recession is six consecutive months of GDP contraction. The Dallas branch of the Federal Reserve has already indicated that the contraction began in first quarter of 2020, and it was a very steep one, with the annual GDP rate down 5%, as shown in a slide from them in our written report. This doubles the decline experienced at the onset of the Great Recession. During the Great Recession, we experienced a total GDP decline of 3.5% until it turned around in early 2009. So you can see we're on track for an even greater contraction. We believe this contraction began in mid-February, but let's say for the sake of argument that the statisticians will say it began around the end of that month. That means we should hear quote, an official recession announcement, unquote, from the Federal Reserve between August 15th and September 1st. This, at least, is our expectation. Six months is a long time for any of us to wait for an announcement from the government, so AP is dividing that six-month time period into three phases, what we will call recession phases one, two, and three, each two months in duration. Phase four is whatever happens after the official announcement. 
Now, based upon the already acknowledged contraction beginning in the middle of first quarter 2020, we have already passed through recession phase one in the latter half of April, and by the end of June, we will have passed entirely through recession phase two. A restoration of a limited number of social activities related to entertainment is not going to restore GDP growth. Housing, travel, energy, automotive, and manufacturing of large ticket items, such as airplanes, for example, will be severely stunted for many more months. So recession phase three takes place over the summer and should result in the expected announcement near the end of August. Now for our individual indicator information. In May, after bottoming out below 2300 in March, the S&P 500 had more gradually recovered about 60% of its losses by the end of April. Yet it will eventually retest that 2300 low and probably drop through it as more and more investors become concerned about the as yet unannounced recession, which we have already entered. During this extended downside period of the business cycle and investment cycle curve, be aware of several bull traps along the way as we illustrated in our May report. In June, nothing has changed our longer term outlook in this area. On June 4th, the Labor Department reported another 1.9 million initial jobless claims and over 600,000 claims for alternative assistance from labor force members ineligible for unemployment. This makes for an estimated 11 million new jobless claims in May. However, on June 5th, in a very surprising announcement, the Labor Department claimed U.S. employment regained an astounding 2.5 million jobs. Frankly, we are extremely skeptical about this number because it would reflect a gross turnaround of over 13 million jobs regained in one month. To counteract the 11 million new claims, plus a, uh, the ability to show a net positive result of 2.5 million. Our expectation is that this rather astonishing number will be revised downwards as the statisticians figure out some accounting errors. Meanwhile, this quote, happy talk, unquote, will now fuel the equities markets as investors will grasp for a miraculous return to quote, normalcy, unquote. We may even see the markets push back to their old February highs based on this speculation. As driven by the hopes implicit in this May unemployment report, equity, equities will react with upward movement until better and more sobering information is eventually released. To us, this simply represents an opportunity to convert to more cash. Second quarter earnings expected to be down at least 40% year over year are going to be reported in July. The disconnect between the equities markets and the underlying realities in the economy will eventually be resolved over the summer. Second quarter corporate earnings reported mid to late summer, as well as the virtually certain Federal Reserve declaration of a recession by late summer will provide a huge splash of cold water onto any further market exuberance. As our APSI indicator looks at the relationship between current month equity law, uh, closes and the ones from four months back, it still remains red for this month's report. A temporary upward change in status is possible for July and or August. Due to the collapsed yield curve, our APYC indicator remains yellow for June. The collapse of the upstream end of the oil business continues, even as oil prices themselves have temporarily stabilized. Energy exploration has come to a virtual standstill. Pump prices for diesel fuel are, in some cases, well below regular gasoline by as much as 20 cents per gallon. This reflects continuing very weak commercial demand for diesel fuel consumed by trucks, trains, and jets, a very light form of diesel fuel. This chart from the U.S. Federal Energy Information Agency shows the collapse in rig counts used in fuel exploration. And you can see that chart in our written report.
Gold spent much of the time above $1,700 per ounce in May, establishing new highest levels in almost seven years. We have already recommended that it's time to cease holding either rhodium or palladium any longer. In our view, there is very limited upside potential, and the industrial demand for these metals used in automobiles and oil refineries for gold and rhodium still puts our APPM indicator well into the red for the time being. As rhodium prices move down relative to gold over the coming months, that indicator should go yellow and then green. During the March, had the Fed had fired its last big guns during the government attempts to forestall and soften the economic blow that COVID-19 is delivering to the economy. It has taken its downward course on interest rates all the way back to a near zero rate policy and has committed to a series of steps designed to pump money into the money supply and the rest of the economic system. Our early warning APMS, which relies upon, uh, which upon a reanalysis we recently performed, provided a warning far back in 2018, but now stays solidly green as the Fed now continues to pump money into the money supply at record levels, supporting the federal government's financial stimulus package and outlays that will be totaling well over $2 trillion, with even more being hinted at by Congress. During April alone, the money supply, uh, which is the M2, went up by a full $1.1 trillion, the largest increase in history by far. This is great for what Chairman Powell from the Federal Reserve claims is liquidity in the financial markets, but these large infusions of cash are not going to places where they will be rapidly spent and hence will not provide the necessary velocity of money and drive the GDP up. The Federal Reserve's weekly aggregate measure of economic stability now puts us into a red recession warning for our APFD indicator. Over the past six recessions, this indicator has been highly reliable in its ability to confirm, to confirm that a recession is on the way. Now a new significant AP indicator development. In past recessions, leading economic indicators have tended to fall off a cliff, moving from green to deeply red in a matter of just a few months. Leading economic indicator reports, as we have been claiming for a couple of months, show a precipitous decline in LEIs has begun. Our first out group of LEIs comes from a well-known organization called the Conference Board, and here's what they said about their set of LEIs or March. This text is courtesy of the Conference Board. Released Friday, April 17th, 2020, the Conference Board Leading Economic Index for the U.S. plummets in March, largest decline in the index's 60-year history. The Conference Board Leading Economic Index, LEI, for the U.S. declined 6.7% in March, to 104.2, following a 0.2% decrease in February and a 0.4% increase in January. One of their senior directors, a fellow named Ottoman Ozilildrium, stated, in March, the U.S. LEI registered the largest decline in its 60-year history. The unprecedented, unprecedented and sudden deterioration was broad-based, with the largest negative contributions coming from initial claims for unemployment insurance and stock prices. The sharp drop in the LEI reflects the sudden halting in business activity as a result of the global pandemic and suggests the U.S. economy will be facing a very deep contraction. That's the end of their April statement. When the conference board reported new numbers for the month of April, back a couple of weeks ago, further precipitous declines appeared. 
Their numbers from March were revised further downwards from the original minus 6.7% to minus 7.5%. And April showed an additional 4.4% decline. So their LEIs show a two month decline just shy of 12%, fulfilling our prediction of falling off a cliff. We expect to see, we expected to see confirming numbers from the Federal Reserve out on their regularly scheduled date of June 2nd. Instead, we were surprised by this rather disconcerting announcement instead. Quote, Philadelphia Fed suspends the release of the leading state leading indexes. Given the sudden extreme impact of the COVID-19 outbreak on initial employment claims in recent weeks, our researchers' standard approach for estimating the six-month change in coincident indexes is not appropriate. Therefore, the Federal Reserve has suspended the release of the state leading indexes indefinitely. Unquote. As the state leading index information is used to create the national LEI, we wrote to the Fed expressing our dismay about the missing information. And they replied sympathetically, but claimed their new system, while in development, would prevent them from providing LEI information until, quote, sometime, unquote, well into 2021. This could not happen at a worse time, we believe, as it will have a tendency to mask where the economy is going for many people. Thankfully, we have our parallel data to work with. Fortunately, using the conference board information, we are able to simulate numbers that would be reported by the Federal Reserve, and those have driven our APLI indicator deeply red for the second month in a row. So for this June report, our final indicator remains solidly red, and we can unequivocally say that a recession began in late February, and there is a high 90 plus percent chance probability that the Fed will declare a recession in mid to late summer of 2020. Conclusion, only one of our six indicators is in green territory. We are keeping our probability of a near-term recession occurring to nearly 100%. We calculate that the actual onset of a recession has already begun around 12 weeks ago and will become officially declared late in the summer. Further modifications to this scenario will depend on what happens in the days and weeks ahead, but events are highly unlikely to change the outcome of what has already been set in motion. Reviewing the events leading up to the Great Recession, there was a brief rebound before the serious declines of late 2008. So a rebound here is certainly possible, but within the context of an unbelievably risky economy just as before. Our final notes. In the final notes for our March report, we stated that our gut intuition had told us that the recession probability for March should have been higher. Based upon the most immediate facts and events available at that time, but we needed the data to validate this intuitive call. Since we base our actual numbers and indicators on available data, we have now gotten the required confirmations via the Fed and conference board data published over the last two months, and we have now reached this final stage in declaring an imminent recession. As of this writing, losses from the S&P's peak of 3393 were only about 9%, but we think that eventually they're going to be much more severe than that, reaching 55 to 65% down into the 1200 to 1500 range whenever the bottom is finally going to be put in, probably in the depths of the recession late this year or into 2021. If you are not risk tolerant over the long term or cannot wait the usual five to six years of recovery time that equity indexes typically take to get back to break even, you should not have any raw exposure in the equities markets at this time. It would be best to be on the sidelines and wait for the worst to come and go waiting to get an all clear signal from our indicators as to a much safer re-entry point. 
Remember the principles of capital preservation and risk management that must underpin every serious investment strategy. Risk takers who lose 50% must follow up with 100% gains to simply break even. If they lose 65%, they must follow up with 200% gains simply to break even. So please be realistic in your outlook and planning. You will not miss out on anything truly big by being a rational and conservative investor at this time. Thanks for listening to our rather lengthy report this month, and we hope you have a safe and healthy summer, and we'll talk to you again at the beginning of July.